uh, in studio with uh, a couple of gentlemen that we have had on the program numerous times in the past. And an event that we have uh, celebrated every year for, I can't remember how many years we've been doing this uh, this show, Eric Stanger and Steve Catlett. Gentlemen, good morning to you both. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, Rob. Good morning. John Thanks Dill. for having us. Be with you. Absolutely. And Steve, being is that you're like seven foot two and that chair is high, you're going to have to kind of lean down into your microphone a little bit. <laughs> I'll try to. <laughs> Height is something that doesn't go in my family. In fact, if you're six feet tall in my family, it's assumed your mother had an affair. So I'm not, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have those problems with being too far away from the microphone, but uh, nevertheless, you do because you're a tall former basketball player. So appreciate you coming in. All right. So Eric, you have an announcement to make. Yes, we are very excited to uh, be honoring Steve uh, in April, April 30th to be exact. At 6.30 at the Holiday Inn will be the uh, 29th annual Distinguished Citizen Award Dinner from the Boy Scouts. And Steve is uh, our honoree this year, and we're so glad that he accepted and, and, and very honored to have him. Steve, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate the, it. The fellow directly to your uh, left there knows about this honor, too. Uh, yes, and it is an honor, and I was extremely appreciative of being recognized and being asked to serve. Going back to Steve, uh, Steve is a very humble individual, deserves phenomenal amount of credit, a lot of visibility, but he shy, shies away from the visibility. Uh, Steve was an obvious choice for this award, but Steve was very reluctant to accept the award, and I view that as is in keeping with what I know about Steve, a man of many accomplishments, but a man that does not pat himself on the back. So, Steve, I speak for a lot of people that says we appreciate the fact you accepted the award. Uh, uh, Buzz has talked to me about it for quite a few yeah. years, Buzz Poland mm -hmm. and uh, Pete Malford. And so I got a call back in, uh, I don't know when it was, a few months back. Buzz needed to meet with me. And and he needed to meet with me and Bill Stubblefield. So I knew right away what it was about. And uh, so he's bringing the big gun in this time, you know. So uh, I, 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 it was a lot easier to say no to Buzz than it was to the big gun here, the Admiral. So, um, And I was at the dinner a few years ago when Bill was honored. And um, it was a great event. And I was there several times when Buzz was honored and in the past and Manny Arvon and different people. And it is quite a list of uh, distinguished individuals. I don't feel like I'm uh, deserving of this, but, uh, you know, I, I look at it from, um, I, I think that the, the night's going to be honoring the, the distinguished citizens, plural, of Berkeley County for those that attend because there, were, there was a whole lot of people that I work with in this community over the years as to why I would be considered for such an honor now, and I truly mean that. Uh, it was... I don't want to get into the it takes a uh, village, you know, kind of thing, but it, it took a community to do what we did with very little funding to accomplish some of the things we did. And there's just a, a, a whole lot of people in this community that deserve as much or more credit than I, than I do. So, Eric, tell us about this selection. Well, I mean, it, uh, it, it is always a hard process because we do have uh, quite a few deserve, uh, deserving citizens in the county, and so many people give so much to the county, and, and we're blessed to be in an area that that, that happens. Um, but looking at, at all that Steve has done over the years and where Parks and Rec were uh, before he took that over and, and the amount of impact that that has on our youth and just the quality of life in Berkeley County. Um, they, I know uh, Steve and I were talking before we uh, came into the studio just a little bit about all the Eagle Scout projects that were done out at Poor House Farm in particular, as well as other parks in the community. So Parks and Scouts is a very close tie, and Steve truly fostered that system for years and brought that to something that – I think the community is, is not only uh, very lucky to have, but very proud of the amount of parks and, and recreation facilities that we have gotten. And our kids are, are so much the better for it. Mr. Gilstrap. Well, congratulations. Thank you, John. Um, beyond, I, I'll put you on the spot here. Why would you consider turning something like this down? Well, I just, I just feel like uh, I, I've gotten more credit for what we've accomplished at Parks and Rec than I deserve. Uh, I truly mean that. Um, it was a team effort. I work with uh, 
some wonderful people on the board of directors at Parks and Rec over the years that are truly Berkeley County people that love this community like I do and uh, had given so much volunteer time and effort in this. So many uh, organizations, so many businesses that we work with, and uh, it was a true team effort to get where we you know, are today. And, uh, you know, I, I guess it's like the, the quarterback thing. The quarterback gets the credit when you win and gets the – gets to be talked about when you lose, you know, but, uh, but it, I, I just, um, I was honored, you know, the best honor I've had in my life was being elected to the Berkeley County Commission, you know, and when the voters of your community speak up and elect you to a position like that, Bill knows, uh, that's quite an honor, and that, that's enough for me in my life, you know, and I, I just want to serve Berkeley County as a commissioner. Uh, I tried to, as my job, to serve Berkeley County to the best of my ability for what was best for Berkeley County, and and hopefully, and I think we did. We made some improvements and things in the in this community that made Berkeley County a better place to live. And uh, and um, so, um, okay. Let me. That's a good me answer. Not, That's a good answer. Yeah, you, I'm not speaking for Steve, but I but I'm going to kind of build upon your question, John. Uh, I view this recognition as not a recognition for myself, but a recognition for all the people that I was working with and that made that contributed so much to the county. Eric has a list of all the nom uh, honorees in the last uh, 29 years. There's some exceptionally impressive individuals, but one thing that I think is characteristic of all of them is they worked well with others. They represented a faction that was trying to improve the county, and they did, in fact, improve the county. And I think Steve is the epitome of this. Uh, and I don't think you're, I know you, Steve, you're not taking this as, uh, as a recognition for yourself. You're taking this as a recognition for all the people that you've worked with Absolutely. and everything that you've accomplished. 100% Bill, yeah. I appreciate you saying that, but that's the truth, yeah. And Eric, what is the, how does this process work? It's, it's an annual event. So is there a nomination process? Is it a committee gets together and without naming names or, you know, it, to the degree that you want to, or, you know, look in, I'm, I'm going to guess there's not a lot of sausage making that goes into this. You know, th there's not an ugly part of, of it. And if there is, I don't want to know about it, but what, but what's the process by which a, each year, a leader is chosen? Well, we do have a committee and uh, people roll off and on, on the committee. And we also ask for past honorees input um, to come up with the short list of uh, uh, people that, that might be honored. And then, you know, we go from there and uh, narrow it down by, by the, the committee um, who, who we would like to have. And uh, part of that, as, we, as we've touched on here, is, is getting the person to honestly accept because most people uh, that are doing so much for the community really don't want that recognition. And uh, those that do step up realize that it's really not about them. It's for the community. Um, you know, we are, are honoring them for what they've done, but by them doing this, it really gives back to the community in, in triple fold uh, with what it does for scouting. I was in the scouts uh, at a young age for several years. I got to go to, um, I had the opportunity to go to Camp Rock Eden one year, which was a great experience. And then as I got older, we got into sports in my family. It kind of takes over and uh, I got out of scouts, but with my career at Parks and Rec, as, as Eric mentioned, uh, at least 15 different Eagle projects that we work with over the years. And I'm, I'm talking really quality projects at the poorhouse in particular, the whole front entrance and handicap entrance into the barn, which is a wonderful facility that we worked on for years to get it to where it is today. Uh, the scouts did some tremendous projects for us. And as in gratitude to them, uh, I thought it was time to just say, hey, let me go ahead and do this, you know, so, for thanking them for what, what they've done for our community and our park system. So, There's another aspect to this as well. And the uh, the men of the year, or the citizen of the year, I should say, is a principal fundraiser for the scouts. And, and it's and having an individual that is well known and well respected uh, enhances that fundraiser. That was the ar one of the arguments we gave to Steve. Steve didn't really, from his personal 
uh, person's perspective, he was a little embarrassed to receive it. He did not want the spotlight shined on him. But when we use the very real suggestion that his recognition, his award, was going to be a benefit to the scouts as a whole, he was willing to accept it. And I think that same thing has been made, same sort of argument has been made to all the prior recipients. None of them looking for self-recognition, self-award, uh, but they're looking for a way to enhance the Boy Scouts. And, and despite all that, Bill, they still selected you as a I know. That surprises me <laughs> <laughs> to no end. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. That, that's absolutely correct. I mean, it's, uh, it, 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 it's almost one of those awards that if somebody really wanted it, they probably didn't, don't deserve it. it. Those people that tend to deserve the award will shy away from it but realize what good it truly is doing to the scouts. I mean, it's, it is the largest fundraiser that we have. Uh, annually and really does propel the scouts to uh, their the money goes all kinds of places not just daily operations but uh, for those kids who can't afford camp necessarily we have scholarships for those kids who can't afford a uniform we have uniform funds um, ways to make sure that all kids can get into scouting and enjoy the program Eric how much uh, do you hope to raise in a dinner like this uh, annually well, uh, goal being 75, 75,000 is, is where we would like to hit. And uh, we feel that we um, have a, a very good opportunity to do that this year. And how do you get to the dinner and uh, where, when and where? And give us all the specifics. Well, the dinner will be at the Holiday Inn on April 30th. Um, hap the uh, cocktail hour will start at uh, 6 p.m. and dinner to follow at 6.30 Um as far as uh, getting tickets or uh, it, being able to go, you can go to the Shenandoah Area uh, Council website, um, uh, or you can call the uh, the office at 540-662-2551, and it, extension 300 is Erin Kenneman. She is our finance person, and she'd be glad to uh, take your uh, information directly, or if she's not available, anyone there is more than happy to help. A couple of comments for you on the section uh, in Facebook where our, our audience uh, does make a lot of comments during the show. From Jackie Long, congratulations, Steve. Well-deserved. From Gula Angle, Steve is a good guy and proud to call him a longtime friend of Raj and mine. From BZ Kearse, congratulations to Steve. Well-deserved. Charlene Flick, Navarro Elans. Steve is the perfect choice for man of the year. Uh, Eric O'Rourke, he definitely got a lot out of the budget compared to budget of the surrounding parks and rec in Virginia and Maryland, Steve. So a lot of folks out there who are familiar with the work that you did sending you well wishes. That's got to feel nice. It does, sure. Right? A those, are, those are the people that have helped over the years to, yeah. to uh, you know, get, get us where we are. Mm -hmm. A couple of things about the dinner. Uh, it's very well and I've been to several of them. It is very well organized. Uh, the Boy Scouts realize we have busy schedules, so it's one of those that's fairly crisp. They have a timeline. They, they hear fairly close to the timeline. So uh, I, for one, hesitate to go to something that's going to be advertised for two hours and the last four and a half hours. This is not the case with Boy Scouts. The second thing, in addition to recognize the citizen of the year, and I say citizens as opposed to men of the year because some women have also been recognized justifiably so. Uh, the other thing is they shine the spotlight on some individual boy slash girl scouts. And in my ceremony uh, when I was uh, recognized, uh, I thought the highlight of the evening were the Boy Scout, in that case was the Girl Scout, and the recognition shown to them. A very accomplished young lady in this case. And so that what that's one of the things that makes the evening so enjoyable and to me so heartwarming, not, not only seeing recognizing someone like Steve, but also the Boy Scouts themselves. Yeah. Now, Eric, you say that you hope to get $75,000 in raised out of this and and god bless you i hope that happens what are the other sources of funding for scouting well uh, boy scouts always do uh annual popcorn uh sales that that's kind of like our equivalent to the uh cookie uh -huh. um uh, we sell popcorn um and there are other uh smaller fundraisers that uh, individual units troops will do throughout the year spaghetti dinners uh other types of, of sales like that um pancake breakfasts uh, to help raise funds. Is there a national source of funding for the individual 
councils? The, uh, the money flows the other way. Okay. It, it goes up the chain, not down the chain. <laughs> okay. All so, right. uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't, we're not infused with uh, any type of, of money from uh, the national organization. We, we pay to be a part of that and to keep that program running. You know, John, kind of like you pay Hornby to come in here and work. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Right. So um, nationally and locally, how robust is scouting these days? How well is it doing? Well, COVID took a big hit on us because uh, you couldn't go out and do anything. And, right. and scouting, I mean, we, we always say, you know, put the outing in scouting. Uh, get the kids out doing stuff. Get them outside. And uh, so that put a, a big hit on us. But we are actually bouncing back. Um, lately, this last year, our numbers for recruitment are up. Our total uh, youth involved are up. And in this area, we actually just did a merger with the Mason-Dixon Area Council. So now we are also uh, over uh, scouting in Washington County, uh, Maryland, as well as a couple counties in Pennsylvania. And now we also have Camp San Equipe under our management. So uh, we're, we're very excited to have. We basically doubled the amount of youth we're serving this year. So what's the big draw these days? When I was a kid, it was weekend camping trips. Is that still the big draw for scouts? Well, we always want to get the kids out, and we think that that still has a huge benefit, but it has uh, it grown and changed with, with the times. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of, of STEM programs, a lot of robotics merit badge. We have computers merit badge. Um, now, when you take astronomy merit badge, you download the application on your phone and you look at your phone and it knows where you're standing. And it says, if you look this way in the sky, that's the constellation you're looking at. Um, so that's we, the way you navigated ships around Antarctica, it, isn't uh, it? Yeah, you just downloaded to your app. I, I had my Apple watch all the time. <laughs> So, yeah, we've grown with the times, but there are over 130 different merit badges that give uh, kids different tastes of different types of uh, uh, programs and, and things they might want to do. We keep the – some of them, first aid is still something that, you know, we require if you want to be a Eagle Scout. But if you want to get robotics, it's there. If you want to get uh, engineering, there's an engineering merit badge. I mean, whatever your, your – uh, desires might be there's something there that can fulfill it eric stanger steve catlin in studio with us here and eric the dinner again is april the 30th how do you get tickets for this um you can go to the shenandoah area council website and go there or call the office at 540-662-2551 and they'll be glad to help you with uh, tickets for the dinner how much is the ticket um 125 dollars and that gets you dinner and Steve's speech. A great show. <laughs> Steve, how long of a speech are you going to get? Uh, very short. <laughs> <laughs> Not for $125. You better be speaking for 10 minutes. Right? Well, and hopefully, also, hopefully the food's good. I'm All sure the food is good. Yeah. <laughs> and as Bill alluded, we do bring some scouts in. We always have an Eagle Scout uh, speaker. Um, and they're always uh, a very, very good. And, and the young lady that Bill was referring to, she was the first uh, girl uh, Eagle Scout in Scouts BSA that we had. And she was uh, just a fantastic example of, of what scouting is now doing for all youth, not just boys. Emily, was that her name? Yes, yeah, she, We had her on the show a couple of times. She was amazing. Yeah, she, she right. really is. Have you, folks, I know you got some blowback from the Girl Scouts when you started to let girls into the Boy Scouts. Has that smoothed over as uh, time has gone by? It really has. I think, uh, I mean, our idea for letting girls into the program wasn't to necessarily steal their uh, base and recruit their people. The people that are that want to be in in Scouts BSA, as we now call ourselves, um, are really like the sisters and and the people that want to go out and have that more outdoor program versus the program that the Girl Scouts offer. The Girl Scouts offer a fantastic program. It's just different than mm -hmm. what we offer. Now, the question I have to ask is: if you as you've been to a few of these dinners here, has anybody's dinner topped Stubblefields with the Joe Ferretti shower? story that was related that, that evening can anybody top that 
I that that was definitely in the top. Uh, that's for sure. I, I don't know that there's one that's uh, that's over over that one. There have been and, a few, but that one's that one was good. And you know the problem with that one is Joe did not give me an opportunity for rebuttal, so I had to wait to come on air to do my rebuttal. <laughs> that's the perfect way to tell a story, Admiral. Right, yeah, right. But there's a lot more truth to Joe's ask my story than my part of the story. My As part. one who was not there, I can say all I know is that you and Joe Freddy took a shower together. That's that's. that's that's what I got out of that, that teaser. Not in the same shower. Though. Not in the same shower. Uh, Eric, do you have a list of some of the previous recipients with you? I, I don't have a list with me, um, but Pete Mulford, Rick Pill, and excuse me if I leave somebody out, of course, uh, Admiral Stubblefield. Um, I know. Uh, Let me add, as you go, you and I can bet. Uh, George Karras. Jim uh, Daly. Jim Daly. Uh, Joe Manchin. Uh, uh, Shelly Capito, uh, Pam Wagner, uh, uh, Bill Powell, uh, so some, and Ed Ed Wilson, Jan Callen mm -hmm. were individuals. So a lot of very recognizable names. Yeah, and I and we've left out some very very deserving names as well. Uh, Steve, a couple more thoughts from you, sir. Uh, first time I went snipe hunting was at a Boy Scout overnight weekend camping trip. And, uh, did you catch a snipe? <laughs> did you get a big one? <laughs> I did not catch one, but I got caught, so that's for sure. So. You know, that snipe has never been caught. No, it hasn't. You know, it's it amazing. Hasn't. In, in the, I don't think there's a merit badge for snipe hunting. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another one as well, and that's a left-handed monkey wrench. And I went all around town <laughs> looking for that left-handed <laughs> monkey wrench. Yep. A snipe yeah. point of your own, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, gentlemen, thank you both for coming in. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, again, to get those tickets, Eric, for this dinner. I go to the Shenandoah Area Council website. Um, just look it up, Boy Scouts of America Shenandoah Area Council, or call the office at 540-662-2551, and we'll be glad to help you with tickets. And this will be April the 30th? April the 30th at 6 p.m. At the Holiday Inn? At the Holiday Inn. Very good. They always do such a great job for us at the Holiday Inn. Give them a quick plug. They they take care of us very well over there. Steve, congratulations. As you heard from the comments in our community, uh, a lot of folks have a great deal of respect for you and appreciate the work that you did at Parks and Rec and what you're doing now in the Berkeley County Commission. Thank you, Rob. Absolutely.